Hello everyone, I'm Liza Quinn, and welcome to my first desk setup video. This is my first attempt at making this kind of content, even though I did start this channel as more of a vlog style channel. I spent most of my time in wigs and mustaches playing characters for you all. But uh, if you follow me on Instagram or watched my last YouTube video, you may have seen my new workstation in the background of some of my most recent posts. And since I've been getting asked a lot about it, I thought it would be fun to go ahead and go more in depth on how I put it all together with the help of my husband and how this new space has really changed the game for my workflow and overall comfort. Let's take a little tour. The first place we should start is this standing desk by Fully. This one is the 78 inch Jarvis bamboo table in dark finish paired with their electric Jarvis frame base. And let me tell you, my back really thanks me for it. I hadn't really considered a standing desk before since really being at my desk this many hours before wasn't the norm. I mean, unless I was maybe editing a video, which was the longest period of time I would be at my desk. But now I'm working virtually full time as many of us are. And honestly, the standing desk is a thousand percent worth it. Uh, the tabletop is nice and deep for my setup. It's 30 inches. This setup includes an M-Audio key station, my Razer V2 keyboard, which takes up a lot of space on their own, not including the double monitors, speakers and tower. But I'll get into these in more detail in a bit. First, let's talk about how great this fully electronic system is. You can choose which side you prefer your touchpad on. And I definitely suggest placing it where you're pretty sure you're not going to lean against it. I've done that once or twice before already and it can be a little jarring. <laughs> it adjusts to four levels, which you can preset to your preferred heights, which is incredibly convenient if multiple people use the same desk. This one really is just me here. So I just use one and three for sitting and standing, but it's nice to know that I have the option for the price. These desks also offer some great add-ons like cable management grommets and trays, which have been great because I used to have a big cable mess. And this handy drawer for additional storage that you can add on. And I opted for it because even though it's kind of small, it's really perfect for the little things that I need to access the most often or quickly, like SD cards, drives, or some lipstick for in-between Zoom sesh touch-ups. <laughs> Maybe we can go more in depth on what's in the drawer in a separate video. If there's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. But now let's talk about the brains of this whole operation, which is my computer. I was going to inherit an older PC tower, which was still in great shape, but my husband and I each create content for our own YouTube channels. Plus he also edits for a living, so we really couldn't afford to wait for his fancy tower upgrade to arrive. And I opted for a new pre-built for my office. We found it on Amazon. We went for this MSI, which is a full tower gaming desktop. We found it for maybe a little over $1,600. It's currently unavailable, so I guess we got lucky. But uh, I'm guessing the GeForce RTX 3060 made it way too appealing to pass up for the price. Even though making the full switch to PC was tough for me at first, I'd say this thing is growing on me. Moving right along, I opted for this Razer V2 Gamer Keyboard, also from Amazon, really just to match the LED lights on my tower and to complete the look. Plus it sets the mood when I write scripts by showcasing my YouTube channel logo colors and I really like that. I do also like this very comfortable removable wrist pad it comes with, plus the hybrid mechanical key switches, they really feel great. Not too noisy while I type notes during virtual sessions, but just enough little click to make it feel uh, nice and fun. I also really like having the number pad to hop to a certain time code in uh, Premiere or in spots on my Pro Tools timeline. So this size was just perfect for me. Over here we have my mouse, which is a G502 Hero from Logitech. And while I love the shape, look, and hyper fast scroll wheel, I do wish I would have gotten a wireless mouse. I'm okay with it for now, but I'm sure I will eventually upgrade. Special thanks to Grovemade for sending over their matte mouse pad in navy. These are a great affordable option, made out of cork laminated with a natural linoleum. It's smooth, durable, and a perfect color for my dark tone space. This room was already painted dark gray and had these curtains up, so I wanted the LED lights to be the only bold pop of color in here. As for the MIDI piano keyboard, it is a great option for someone like me who's not a piano player, but rather just uses it for vocal coaching and songwriting. I'll link this M audio below. For me, 61 keys provides just the right amount of versatility while not taking up too much space. And the semi-weighted keys feel pretty great. 
In terms of audio, you can see I hopped on the SM7B bandwagon and I'm really glad I did. I mean, I use it for daily Zoom sessions, streaming, voiceovers, vocal tracking. It's really been great across the board. But what completes this for me is the Blue Compass Premium Tube Style Broadcast Boom Arm that my husband suggested I buy. And I just love how it feels. The tension adjusts to the perfect amount for my needs. I can push it away when I'm editing and pull it out to a comfortable spot when I'm coaching or streaming. This is really my favorite part of the space. Tying it all together is this industry standard in portable interfaces, the Focusrite Solo 3rd Gen. Uh, I don't track multiple vocals or instruments and I wanted something inconspicuous, so the Solo is perfect, it's user-friendly, and it sounds great. But let's not ignore these 27-inch monitors by Asus because they're part of the reason why I am so much more productive. I was working on a 13-inch MacBook Pro before, and while I love my little Mac, my eyes were struggling. At first, I told my husband that I didn't think I would need dual monitors, I thought it would be overkill, and he convinced me otherwise. He teases me for angling them this way, but I like it. I don't ever feel any neck strain, and it makes me feel like I'm in a spaceship since I don't have the fancy curved monitor, but I, I can definitely see the appeal now. So eventually I'll probably switch to one, even though I like being able to move the monitors around more easily if necessary. And I don't mind the separation in the middle. It makes me feel like I have two separate things going on at the same time. I don't know. It's a, really a matter of personal preference. I mounted them on these separate monitor arms to provide more real estate for my DSLR camera stand and Elgato Key Light Air. The separate arms just allow me to have adequate space and versatility. And we did use a little foam mat between the base and table to protect the tabletop. Most of this rests on top of this great extra large wool felt desk pad, also by Growth Made. And I really like that it blended in with my color scheme so well. I managed to find these handy little coasters that match it perfectly by Bar Vivo. I try not to keep any open drinks near my gear, of course. So I keep this stylish water container by Swell nearby. And it's not technically a part of my desk setup, but since it's always with me and it's pretty great, I just had to mention it. Now, hiding behind these computer monitors are my speakers, which are, to be honest, my least favorite part of the setup right now, only because they're larger than I would like. They're old, but trusty, and are oddly positioned behind my monitors at the moment. I still haven't decided which route I'm gonna go with speakers though. I'm still kind of shopping around. I don't mix music here, I'm mostly track, but I do mix video audio, which is really why I have them. And ultimately I prefer to use the actual output source to reference video mixes, but they come in handy just to not rely solely on my headphones all the time, which are the Sony MDR 7506 studio monitors, a reliable, known and comfortable pair that handle a lot of different situations. We also use these to monitor sound while we shoot, so it's pretty great. I chose this above or under desk headset holder with a, a little mount hook, and it has adjustable height and rotating clamp as the perfect storage spot for these. It keeps them safe and out of my way, but within perfect reach for day-to-day -day use. Illuminating this very corner is my Eleona Modern Swing Arm Desk Lamp with wireless charger and USB port. And while I work, I plop my phone on the charging base and it's just nice to know I have a close USB port in case I ever needed to charge something. I just love the look of this lamp. Um, I added a Philips Hue bulb to it to conveniently turn it on and off with my Stream Deck or the Hue app along with this fun Hue light strip, also color coordinated to match my logo colors. And oh yes, speaking of my Stream Deck, this mini version was a fun little add-on. My husband got it for me as a gift when he saw how curious I was about his. He opted to surprise me with one because A, he knows I hate clutter, and I was already pretty tight. And B, I really didn't need many of the functions. They're just fun to have. Right now I have it set up to turn on and off various light settings, adjust uh, levels of lights, the key light brightness, and oh, this is fun. I opened my D&D &D Beyond character page for easy access when we stream on Sunday nights. And for those of you who don't know about D&D, &D, you might not know what D&D Beyond is. <laughs> we'll talk about that in another video. Anywho, if I ever do decide to do a live stream, you know, it's just cool to know I have a few of the features available. And if you're going to spend a lot of time in that space, you might as well enjoy it. Which brings me to this fun gadget, the Devoom TV Max, a smart pixel art Bluetooth speaker and alarm clock. 
The Bluetooth speaker is handy if I'm at the computer and I want to take a hands-free call. Also, the programmable lights are so fun. They give me a bit of a, a retro pixel art nostalgia. And even though I have alarms and reminders on my phone, it's just great to know I have a backup for meeting reminders and things like that. I'm quite forgetful, so it's all very useful. <laughs> Moving over to my camera setup, I have the Sony a7C on an Ikan Homestream 21-inch variable height tabletop camera stand. There were honestly limited options when it comes to camera stands for desktops, so it could be tricky to sort out the positioning, at least it was for me. This one gets the job done for what we need, and let me clarify that we didn't purchase this camera to be a webcam, of course, but obviously I'm on Zoom with clients. We do sometimes Zoom interviews, and we just really wanted to make sure that we had the utmost quality. I have this Sony lens on it and it just looks great and is easy for me to use. Over its shoulder is the Elgato Key Light Air, as I mentioned before. Some would argue that, you know, any old light panel would do. And I mean, that could be true, but this just gives me a lot of great control. It's very convenient. I love the wireless capability and I just like the way it looks. It's very streamlined. Let's talk about my chair. <laughs> I found this very affordable chair, and although it isn't a Herman Miller, it's a good size for me. Uh, it's comfortable enough for now. And I really like that the arms swivel back. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a thing people care about. <laughs> it might seem like a pointless detail. And it's not uh, a very common feature though, surprisingly. So I just like that. And sometimes I just want to get rid of these things. You know, I'm not sure why. But knowing that I can just makes me happy. One interesting little accessory that I am so glad I purchased is this Move Map by Eris on Fully.com. The first time I stood up to work, my feet were killing me after a little while and, and I wasn't in very supportive shoes, yes. But I also didn't want to feel like I had to be obligated to be in workout sneakers at home all day. Uh, and this is really just a throw rug on tile, so I figured I could really use the anti-fatigue support, and I really love this purchase. This one has these great peaks and valleys that encourage movement, stimulate the feet. I find myself getting up on releve, if you know what that is, it's like on your toes. I do notice that when I'm with clients, I have a lot more energy and I'm much more focused for a longer period of time. And when I'm sitting, I have this bizarre habit of wanting to sit with my legs crossed. I, I don't know why. So I decided to get a little ottoman to be able to extend my legs, save my knees, and relax my back against the chair back. This little find is a gem. This is a modern round velvet storage ottoman by Ornavo, which includes a tray top coffee table and storage and I love this because I keep little extra things in here like my extra mic windscreen, cables, little things like that that I don't need to access often, but I also don't want taking up space in my shallow desk drawers. And while I don't use this tabletop to actually place things on, I do flip the ottoman over at night so that my cat doesn't get enticed to climb up on it and cover it in gray cat hair. <laughs> if you're interested in finding out more about these products, I've linked them all in the description below. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.